Bobcat, Dana, welcome to the show. Oh, thank hey, you. Guys. Hey. Welcome, welcome. It's good to see you guys. It's uh, well, That's good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great if, like, if you didn't want to see us. Yeah, that would be off, but it happens sometimes. You know how it is. There's times when I'm sure you could do a show where you're doing an interview and you're like, oh, fuck, I don't want to do it. There's plenty of times you don't want to do it. But do you, uh, is there, like, do you get to pick who you talk to or do you? We do. Oh, good. We make yeah. mistakes, though. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we realize that was a terrible judgment error. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have a code? Uh, or, or we'll get there and, like, right before the show that day, go, did you say yes to <laughs> Did you say him? yes to him? No, I don't think we did. Or yeah, the, so what are we going to do? Yeah, the monosyllabic answer is always the best. Yeah. So how's it going? Good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, terrific. Yeah. You guys so are back on the I'll road, do, huh? I yeah. guess I'll do it yeah. all. <laughs> People do say that, though. Like, when you talk to radio guys on the road, they say some comics come in in the morning, and uh, they're, just, they're, they're just one word, or they want to do bits. Right. And it's, I don't know yeah. how you guys do a bit on the radio. Well, often, like, when you're on the road, the road when you're on the road, and, you, you know, and you're doing taint and teabag or whatever, <laughs> and, they, and they, they give you a piece of paper. Paint's out of rehab. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Teabag's in Seattle. But don't acknowledge that. Don't tell people. <laughs> Yo, that's a huge thing. Yeah. Don't, cre- don't let people know when you talk to Tate. Yeah. Tate's uh, not going to be in the room. No. But the listeners think he's there. And Tate, so. Tate, is, Tate is a malignant clinical narcissist who has the entire building terrified. <laughs> You've never heard of him. Yeah. He's, yeah. At his, he's broadcasting from his basement in Sanibel Island. Don't talk about And don't say anything about the color blue. You know, so <laughs> yeah. It really sets him off. Yeah. yeah. They go. Taint is actually a voice that Teabag does, but nobody <laughs> knows it's the same person. So just talk as if it's two. I got oh, roped man. into that once. They wanted like, me. Yeah. I'm like, you want me to pretend there's other people in the woods? You <laughs> fucking fuck you. <laughs> was that in Minneapolis? <laughs> no, it was in Texas. Okay, oh, there's one in Minneapolis, yeah. too. I had one in Texas where uh, I was hanging out. It was a great show. They were in Austin. They were really nice. And they go, hey, we got some uh, some guys from Hill Country here with some rattlesnakes. <laughs> It's like, do you want to stick around? And I went, no. <laughs> but if they're cool, I'll stick around. Like I'm, I'll watch. Went, so I go, I go. Well, they're in the green room, and I open up the green room, and there's like a Duck Dynasty guy with a rattlesnake, and wow. he just shoves it in my face. <laughs> uh, like, now I think I'm done for the day. He's I not was, cool. I was in uh, <laughs> not cool. I was in ba- I was in Battle Creek, and it was in the winter, and they go, I, I show up to this thing, and they go, uh, uh, Dustin Diamond's here too. Uh. So Screech uh, is inside, and they want me to do the thing outside. <laughs> cause, cause, so you know how they can pay on the the morning shows now. They'll, they'll pay so they can advertise something like the Good Morning Battle Creek, the mm-hmm. TV show. Sure. So they're advertising this high pressured. Uh, it was so you could wash your car like a car wash at home, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, well, I'm outside, and uh, I'm, I'm doing a commercial. <laughs> I don't know, and they cu- and they just cut to us and. Uh, uh, I just sprayed the woman. I just, <laughs> I, I really did. I was just, it was like one of those epiphanies. I'm like, what am I doing? Huh. And I just, and I started squirting. She started laughing when I hit her feet. And then I just did uh, head to toe. Because <laughs> you're like, it's it's one of those moments where you're like, there's really only two roads to go down yeah. here. Yeah. The I, right road and the wrong road. Yeah. I've had a lot of those where I'm like, yeah, well, but- I'm never going to be in this situation again. Yeah. You know, I was doing a benefit years ago with Michael Bolton was the headliner and I'm like I'm never gonna have this kind of access to Michael Bolton again so <laughs> he's out he's out singing and <laughs> weaving his magic and uh I just walk out casually, and then I just grab him, and I start dry humping him. I, start, I, just start, I was banging him really hard, and, the, and I get tackled, and then I get dragged off, and the crew's yelling at me, what the fuck is wrong with you? And they go, get out of here. I go, oh, I just want to say hi to Michael. Like, I, I, just want to say, I don't want Michael you know, to even see you. When he, I go, so is this is no softball, you know? And so, so that I get out of the auditorium, and then I run around the entire auditorium, and come back in for the other side of the stage. <laughs> I start walking out again. But I didn't, even, I didn't even make it past the kick drum. Like, they had me there, like, blam, I got tackled again. No, <laughs> had, we joke, but had George H.W. Bush not dry humped Reagan at the Republican convention in 80, he wouldn't have been vice president. That no, is how true. he got it. A lot of people true. don't know that. Who's behind me? I love any scenario that somebody who's a performer can put himself in where security is acting like there's an audience member jumping on stage. <laughs> yeah. Have yeah, you ever I'm, seen the video of David Cross uh, stage diving Jim Belushi? 
No, oh, he was in here yesterday. David was here yesterday. I was, oh, no, oh, really? yeah, yeah, Dave has this obsession, a negative obsession with Jim Belushi. I don't think I'm talking out of school. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, by the way, Andy Kindler, the great Andy Kindler, has the best line about Jim Belushi. <laughs> Who died and made him famous? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, David, David was <laughs> doesn't like Jim Belushi. Would just go on stage and do these crazy dances on stage with him, and the security would drag him up. <laughs> <laughs> he comes back and he dances. I know I'm on the radio and I'm dancing in my chair, but it was a thing but of it's, beauty. It's that thing is like quite often I'm just like in a situation I'm going well, well I I gotta I'm not gonna have this opportunity right again. right might as well do it. Yeah, I mean we watched a video of uh, and I don't know what it was very recently I don't remember what festival it was, but Shaggy Two Dope from the Insane Clown Posse came out and tried to drop kick Fred Durst from Limp Bizkit yeah. while he was performing. Well, I, and he is, missed. Is he, the, is he the one that specifically thinks that magnets are miracles? No. It's, Shaggy is, yeah. yeah. Oh. Shaggy, Shaggy does. Shaggy, Shaggy does feel that uh, way. Magnets, magnets are the textbook definition of not a miracle. Right. <laughs> it's I actually, a simple engineering. I had it saying Clown Posse in studio, and I, yeah. I asked them, I said, About, you know, magnets are not actually magic, they're science. Right. And they actually turned it around on me, and they said... Well, how do they work? And I said, I don't know. Well, see, I and then he, they said, well, then magic. And I so said, I, right. I did the gathering of the juggalos, and that's what I was going to do. I was going to go out there, uh, you know, when a negatively charged ion and a positively charged <laughs> ion yeah, yeah. share the same space, they can't be in the same. You know, I was going to yeah. explain magnets yeah, yeah, yeah. and drop the mic. And that's how magnets are done. Boom. Yeah. But uh turns out uh, uh, I just wanted to get out of there with my life. <laughs> right. I was, like, doing my character from the 80s that I jettisoned. <laughs> I just, I was, I was, how long in, how long into it did you say I better go back to oh, fucking the character? Oh, oh my god, I got to the venue. I I, I, I was like, I put on. I I feel really I'm embarrassed. I never. I put on a shirt. I put on like a. No, you didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. No, 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 no. no, no I put no. on a t-shirt that said family or something like that. I got, I'm gonna <laughs> you put get, on a Juggalo oh. t-shirt. Yes. Don't look at me like this. Have you been uh, to the gathering? I've done it twice. Oh, <laughs> where did you do it? And uh, it was backwoods of Ohio, I think. Yeah. Twi- I don't remember. I know it was I did it with into- Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> and, and then I did it once with Maya Angelou. I, but so you so you go so, there, you put so on wait, the juggalo t shirt. Was it because the place I went, it was it wasn't in Illinois. It was outside of Columbus, I believe. Columbus was the airport or Lexington, Kentucky. It, but the time I went it had no there's no lights, there's no security. No. It's just a fence. With about, they say yeah. a lot more, but there was about 7,000 people. Yeah. There's, there's nothing calming about a clown in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, 7, it's not comforting. comforting. <laughs> but it's like, there's just fires and people just beating each other up. It's, very, it's like Lord <laughs> of the Flies. Like, they suddenly pick somebody, like, Piggy, Piggy, and they just beat up yeah. one of them. And it's, it really is the scariest place I've been. And I grew up, like, in a house with bikers and so stuff. So what you're saying is, it's a posse of clowns, but... They're somehow insane. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> did, I played the year after Tila Tequila. Oh, my God. Oh, that's, yeah. When she got rocks and shit thrown at yeah, her. Yeah, they knocked yeah. over outhouses and tossed poo at her. Yeah. It was like an inverted Gigi Allen concert. <laughs> the, whole, the, whole, the whole crowd is throwing Duke at yeah. her. Yeah, there you go. Now, I actually you, had good success there twice. Like I got not shocking. It was scary to get there because it was the backwoods. Yeah. You're like, where the fuck am I going? And then you show up, and there was an outdoor t- like tent with hay set up. But I just did. I came and they I did. Yeah, I, they were great. Like, when I was they showed t- up, and, and I did. Yeah, and that was the thing. It's like I, I think they're they're really appreciative. Yeah. <laughs> that you did it. And I had a I had a okay set, but it was the before and after getting in and out. Yeah. I, did you get paid in cash? Like I got a I a, believe I did. I yes. got a plastic garbage bag full <laughs> yeah. of twenties. <laughs> I think I did get cash. You're yeah, absolutely yeah. right. But you felt you went right back to the character? Oh, in the, when I was up on stage, yeah, yeah I'm not gonna, funny. I'm not that. I was like, ah, it's nice to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck this, man. I'm getting out. And my, my wife at the time thought, oh, this is going to be funny. And she's like, and she tried to dress like her version of a juggalo. But right. she, I go, you look like Josh Gabor. You right. look like. <laughs> so, yeah, and here's uh, the thing, honey. Like, irony is not the strong right. suit yeah. of the juggalo. Yeah. Yes, did, exactly. you, did you, did, did, was Upchuck the clown your opening act? I believe he was. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when I was there, Upchuck. Yeah, Chuck, I think so. Upchuck Chuck's like going, you got nothing to worry about. It's it's family. It's like a Dave Matthews concert. And I'm like, well, fuck you. 
It's not like a Dave Matthews concert, and fuck you for thinking I've ever been to a Dave Matthews concert. <laughs> and so, true story. Yeah, there's Upchuck. He, so Upchuck is driving around. He's got a around. t-shirt on that says, I left my hatchet at home. So he's driving me around in a golf cart. There's a golf cart there, and and like, and and like and, and we're going through the grounds, and, and the juggalos are getting out of the way like we're like, you know, who are the millionaires? They're in a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, swear to God, a can of Fago First of all, no, first this guy runs alongside the golf cart and just punches him right in the face. He's like, fuck <laughs> you, I'm drunk, fuck you. Dude. Really? Because yeah. <laughs> there are really a couple good shots in, and I'm kind of like... Did he hit up Chuck? Yeah, he hit him right in the face, and, he, and, and, and then up Chuck just hits the gas, and he goes, I'm here every year, they know me. <laughs> and then a can of Fago comes whizzing in at about 50 miles an hour like a baseball pitch, and <laughs> pops him right in the head, and I hear a... <laughs> and yeah. he slumps a little. And he didn't go all the way out, but he slumps. He goes, I'm hurt. I'm hurt really bad. <laughs> and he goes, steer. And so he hits the gas, and I'm steering. <laughs> this somewhere unconscious clown, and we're weaving it's in not, and out yeah. of juggle. It's, like, it's the mis- opening of a James Bond movie. <laughs> yeah. it's just, it, was, it was like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. They it's, knocked him out with a can of fake Yeah, out. yeah. And then, uh, and, then, uh, and then I helped him do this trailer that was a dressing room kind of thing. And, uh, and we then, Put a fago on his head for the swelling. <laughs> of course you did. It's what's weird, what's weird you about Chuck your... is people don't know uh, yeah. he's actually an incredibly successful life coach. <laughs> 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 did you put on your Juggalo T-shirt before that incident no. or right after? I was on stage and they threw one up. Yeah, okay, so, I better put this so, on. No, it was yes. like a. Yes, it I was, will. It was mm-hmm. like a uh, like a, a bit of a face off. Like, uh, you know, are you sincere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you? Because you know, a lot of the juggalos, they're down with the clown until they're dead in the ground. Yeah. So they want to know how down with <laughs> the clown. They want to know if you. I was down with yeah. the clown. It was just like uh, uh, oddly Kamala Harris's uh, campaign slogan. That's which true. Doesn't really track. <laughs> down with the clown. Down. There is that. Uh, uh, well, yeah. What is the overarching? Uh, thematic uh, theory of the Juggalos. Is I, it, I uh, honestly don't know. Family, family. Yeah, you know, yeah. They, I get family. N- 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 never good. There is a. <laughs> you know, there, I remember seeing like, a photo. We're family. Of... Well, that's that's. I'm here to get away from my family. <laughs> <laughs> I had because I had done there. They had a show. I forget what channel it was on. Where they hosted like these videos or something. Fuse. Uh, Fuse. Fuse. Yep. And I did it, and uh, I, I I had a good relationship with uh, with those guys. So I think that <laughs> Shaggy when... Poop Poop. Yeah, Shaggy Poop. Uh, you know, Shaggy Poop and uh, Violent J. Violent J. Sha- Shags and J. Yeah. Violent, yeah. Violent J. Yeah. But those guys, they're they're, they're silly. But what they are they like sh- at the part? Violent up Chuck Chuck. Violent Violent meets Stinky Stinky. Do you know Violent? <laughs> they're just they're normal dudes. It's so like, like the crazy following. And so you talk yeah. to them like, yeah, my back's bothered. Like, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But well, they were really. <laughs> but the fact that they were. You think Comey's gonna break? I don't know. This is. <laughs> Did they go ahead? That's just the fact that they were cool. I think helped me going in because I had done the show and I had a relationship. Oh, okay. with them. and they've been doing yeah. this for twenty five years. Yeah, I mean, they, they actually they classify, which is stupid. They classified their followers as a gang. Yeah, like in the FBI won't unclassify, yeah. as a, which they're not a gang. They're just no. a bunch of people that go no. to a concert. Yeah. Right. And they're and they're 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 there's uh how do I say this not to be, but there are a lot of it is like a lot of. Uh, I don't mean to. It sound this part. I make. I have no problem making fun of them, but this part sounds a little condescending. It's but it's a lot of broken people kind yeah. of coming together, uh, right? It, in a positive way. I would say that. That's, well, that's why yeah. family no. is probably the theme because yeah. it's like people who want to have the yeah. well, feeling it, of family. It is like, and I, you know, it, it it's like a monster like thing that I would do, like a Star Trek convention totally. or a monster convention. It's just a different, a different kind of cosplay. It, you know, it's like you can dress up like a crazy clown, or you can dress up like uh, but Picard, the, but the commitment a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the difference is everybody's well, there's fucking. So, there's a socio, there's a socioeconomic sort of self stratification that happens. People are fucking at the Juggalo. No one's fucking at trekking no conventions. Fucking at trekking yeah. conventions. <laughs> and the Juggalo is the people yeah, are fucking I, in tents. I they're say, shitting outdoors. It's a, it's a much better I vibe. Say, I will say this: I was at Comic Con in San Diego. Not to brag, sorry, ladies, taken. And I'm in the hotel. And yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of cosplay. A lot of people, and uh, uh, and they're and they're not. By and large, it seems that they are not, by and large, afraid of sugar or carbohydrates in massive amounts. Right. There's a lot of morbidly obese C-3PO walking yeah. around. I saw coming out of a hotel room just, and this is, think, think about what this means, the saddest hooker ever. <laughs> Why was she There's leaving a, my room? She was leaving a room. <laughs> she was in a lime green. And you know that it was just like, thank you for the Klingon right of, oh, oh. Yeah, I just got to get out of yeah, here. Yeah, it's, it's not, a, it's a fun Your time. time is up. Yeah, but nobody's, uh, 
nobody's waiting for the master of ceremonies to drive by them so they can punch him in the face. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but there's no naked girls there either. You That's true. The juggalos. There's a porn but star who there, I love, and she was there, nude there. And do I, you I, want I, them naked is the question. Oh, yeah. The juggalettes? One yeah. of my favorite. Oh. Pepper Kester. She's one of my favorite porn stars ever. She's a redhead. She's fucking phenomenal. She goes every year. She uh -huh. wants nothing to do with me Wait, sexually. She's super pretty. <laughs> she's gorgeous. Right there. She's oh. so hot. I'm sorry and to She hear goes that, every year. To the Gathering of the Juggalos? Every well, year. The, she's a huge fan. You guys asked what the theme is. The point of the Gathering and of the she's Juggalos. she's just in porn now. She's studying to be a cardiologist, which is really it's nice. all about. It's all about clown love. Yeah. Uh, that, but I hate, that's what it's about, is clown love. That's what you're experiencing in a golf cart. People I, hate clowns. But maybe it was Not Juggalos. Of, maybe because of Shakes the Clown, they... <laughs> Yeah. They booked me. Oh, yeah. You think maybe they kind of gave you a pass? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know how they feel about shakes. They probably would like shakes. I would think so. Alcohol clown movie. Yeah. How yeah. long did you do? Because it's always weird when you got to yeah. do like, I got to do an I, hour. I think I did like 50 minutes. I mean, it wasn't, I, I didn't did, think I had to bail. Uh, I did like, uh, f uh, I, I, did 46 minutes okay that's because fun. we were supposed to do wow. 45 and it was like the end of the sting i had my wife on the side <laughs> of the stage and as, soon as, as soon as she had that trash bag full of money she yeah. gives me a cue and i come in the middle of a bit you've been great whoop whoop because it's late though when you're going on the, the, the thing yeah. that's hard is they're outdoors yeah. they're not even being shitty if they like you they're not they're just tired they've been yeah. drinking all day it's fucking like you on like 12 30 one yeah. o'clock oh yeah so they kind of hang out they'll yell family or Whoop, whoop, but they're not yelling. But there's also they were, they were great. But there's yeah. a, a lot of comics show up and they don't go on. They just never go they're on. They're afraid. It's like what yeah, are you fucking they, afraid. They of? show up at the gig and then they still they don't go on. I mean, you're there at that. Oh point. yeah, I know you got to go on. Yeah. I felt like the stage was the safest place I was. Yeah, when <laughs> I was there, it was lit. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's also yeah. like a lot of drugs going around, and literally, yeah. I mean, there's documentaries about gathering of the juggalos, which yeah. I I love. They're, I mean, half the people there, the clown makeup that they've got on is being done with spray paint. Yeah. There. Like, I'm yeah. spray yeah. paint to the face. Do they which... know, like, this isn't going to wash off right away? <laughs> right. And also, <laughs> just it, it, toxic fumes but just surround it. Yeah, but but what short. I want to know is, wh where is, and Bob, you probably know a little bit about this, is where is the, is there a, a rage in the real Clown community, as they say, like le clown, the people that really take clowning seriously. Mm, By about, the way, all these people are idiots. Uh, the, the people, the serious clown people, like the how people do they that feel about the juggler. Yeah, because they came after you at yeah. shakes. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, because they have like the clown code of ethics and stuff. Yeah. Like you're never supposed to be in your clown makeup when you're driving in case you get killed in an accident. They don't want a wow. dead clown. Wow, you're supposed yeah. to be happy all the oh, time. Wow. Yeah, they just yeah. don't no. want dead. Never molest a child in your clown makeup yeah. in case yeah. the police come in. Spare yeah. all of us. That one didn't work. No. <laughs> <laughs> there's a great there's a great line in a this is old I was you know on a YouTube Don Rickles YouTube deep dive and he was roasting Jerry Lewis in like 1968. And he goes, Yeah, you know, Jerry's a clown. And there's a lot of great clowns. Emmett Kelly, that's about it. <laughs> 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 hey, how come uh, it was so long after Shakes the Clowns that you went back into filmmaking? I to, feel... As a director? Yeah. I didn't I didn't I couldn't get a job uh, as a director after Shakes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really couldn't. I couldn't and I was trying. I was trying to do uh rock videos and commercials and everything I could try and I didn't. It wasn't until it was a long time and then Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel was, uh, he was doing the man show and he asked me to direct. But that's like 15 years later or something it like that, right? It was probably or, or 10 or 12. 10? I can't remember, maybe 12, but, but Kimmel's mother was a big fan of Shakes the Clown. Which is, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that I got into directing, I mean, I, that's what I really love doing. I love writing and directing, making movies, but, uh, and shows and stuff, but, um, if it wasn't for Kimmel, I would never. That that's how I cracked it. He got me on the Man Show. Then we, I did Windy City Heat for him, and then I went and worked on Chappelle a little bit after that, and then or before that. And so if it wasn't for Kimmel, I wouldn't be directing. Did that drive you crazy though? When you get this crack at directing, you're like, "This yeah. is my passion. This yeah. is what I love." And then for the next twelve years, yeah, I couldn't. You can't do it. Yeah, I was really depressed. What I were you trying, doing? Just I was doing. I was doing stand up. I was going out like probably about forty weekends a year. Oh, you, just, you know, yeah. doing stand up, playing all those clubs, and trying to get work and writing. And I was starting to write and make. I was always writing and making things um, that I thought would get made or stuff for other people. And then I finally was like, I don't know if I can even write a script that people can read. And I and I wrote this. Uh, this movie it was uh, it was uh, 
uh, it's a kind of a rom com, but with a tiny bit of bestiality in it. And it, <laughs> and, it, and it was called Stay. And and it was uh, 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 yeah. So in that movie, uh, I shot for twenty grand, and I'm not in it. And then it got into Sundance, and that kind of changed everything. But it, you know, I, it was Kimmel who let me direct his show and everything that changed. I, I wouldn't be a director if it wasn't. How, how long did you take off from stand up? I know, Dan, you always kept doing stand up, but you took off for a while, right? Yeah, I take it off, and again, like now we're out doing dates, Dana and I, and uh, um, I haven't done it like this in years, and it's actually fun. Like yeah, last yeah. night we're at the Bell House, and it's it's just been fun. Are you right? doing it tonight too, the Bell House? Yeah, yeah. Bell oh, you are tonight. Okay. Bell yeah. House. The Bell House tonight, tomorrow night, we're in Boston at the Somerville Theater, and then we go to Washington, D.C. to the Kennedy Center, Annapolis, Maryland, and Philadelphia. Yeah, Somerville's I've shot two specials there. That's an awesome room. Oh, in yeah. that theater? It's an yeah. old movie theater. Yeah, it's, it's great. great. Yeah, it's yeah. You great. two shot something there. Yep. It has, uh, I mean, the, the staff was a little annoying when I wanted to sign at the end, but the room itself, the performance, you've done shows, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, I've, I've been there with, uh, uh, at the film festival and stuff. <laughs> I sound like such a pretentious load. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, maybe you doing your comedy, but <laughs> it's, it's also funny because it, it's Somerville. Which is now totally gentrified. Yeah. But when I first moved to Boston, yeah. I lived in Somerville, and it was like, hey, I'm, I think I'm having a heart attack. Don't be an asshole. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was a tough it was a He's going to have for attention. Yeah. She Don't had... shit yourself. I'm, I'm not, I just did. I'm having a heart attack. Well, we... You guys know Gavin and Sweeney, right? Of course. Oh, I, it's funny. I don't know those guys. I don't think oh. I've met, I met Steve Sweeney once, uh, but those are like the Boston legend comedians. Yeah, nice. oh. yeah, well, it was, you know, Dana. And I, uh, I, you know, the ding ho and all that, and it's funny. It's, it's. I do talk, about it, but the ding ho was like a. It was, it was a violent place. Yeah, but you also pointed something out that I never. The ding ho was a Chinese restaurant with a Western theme. That was a comedy. Club. Yeah, don't ask. It was, it was <laughs> like a lot that, of that owners. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> it was, we would. There would be like people like doing. I remember. Uh, Shun Li. I won't name who the people were, but it was like uh, I'll name them. People doing coke off of the, you know, those pork ribs with the orange <laughs> yeah. thing on it. Uh, they would be doing lines <laughs> off of the ribs, and then they'd be serving that to families uh, for <laughs> oh lunch. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, oh, I, it's. Uh, I story. saw so much. I I will say this. Uh, I've never in my life done cocaine. I've, ne I've just never, I've never done it. I have seen, being in Boston comedy in the 80s, more cocaine done than the Eagles roadie. Yeah. It was just... It was, it was, on, it was, everybody was shoveling it. I mean, every comic coach. would do it, right? It Going was, on, you're fucking doing lines and doing your late night Friday sets. Yeah. And the show was like, I mean, the, the club, like, uh... After hours, we would put cardboard over the windows, and I remember because I, I I don't I I I don't drink and stuff, and that's been years. But I remember I was 19 years old, <clears throat> and uh, it's 9 a.m. and I'm doing blow on the bar at the ding ho, and the and that this I've been you know off of that stuff and drinking for 38 years, 37 years, uh, and no 38. And that, so so what happens is though, so I'm 19 years old, and the door opens. And it's police, and it's like backlit, you know what I mean? Like daylight's <laughs> pouring in, and these cops, and I'm gacked out of my mind, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to jail. And the cops go, Lenny, how the fuck are you? Yeah. <laughs> and they come in, and they start doing blow with us at the bar. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, Lenny Lenny Clark. Clark. By the way, you weren't going to say who, Lenny Clark. <laughs> well, Lenny would have no problem with that story. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Lenny, <laughs> Lenny wears a white hat in this. He's a hero. Yeah. Yeah. He knew the cops. He's why I didn't go to jail. <laughs> but it was like... Uh, this is a, here's a story about how insane that place was. Was uh, uh, Barry Crimmins, who my my buddy, who I, I did a documentary on, called me lucky. Uh, he had broken his fist. He had punched the wall, so he's in a cast, right? And so I had just stopped drinking, and this guy, uh, another comic, who I'm not going to name because I want to save his face, but he's in a blackout, and he's got me in a headlock, <laughs> and he's trying to pour liquor down my throat. Jesus. And so, and so. Uh, <laughs> And so Barry comes in, he's like, let him go. <laughs> and so <laughs> I don't want to say the guy's name, but he goes, let him go. And he goes, and the guy goes, hug me or hit me, Mr. Crimmins. <laughs> and Crimmins just takes his cast and goes, pop. 
and he punches <laughs> him in the face and he breaks his jaw. <laughs> and then later on, Barry goes, that was the fastest decision I've ever made in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Hug me or hit me, Mr. Groot. <laughs> Hug me or hit me. It was just, it was like... Uh, That's, that is a, there's a weird beauty to it, but it's also... It's poetic. <laughs> insane. Yeah. There was uh, a guy, is just I, 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 I don't want to get the names wrong, but it was like uh, a heckler. He's like, I'm going to go home and get my knife. You know, and Lenny's like, go get your fucking knife. <laughs> and so he goes back and he comes back to the door. <laughs> the door men uh, who were co- comedian adjacent beat the guy. <laughs> Just beat the fuck out of him. Oh, good. <laughs> and, the, and so he's getting standing up and Don Gammon goes, Hey, uh, you forgot your knife. <laughs> and they hand him his knife back. <laughs> That's like... They, they might as well have pissed on him at that point. That's yeah. a great yeah. story. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, tough guy, you forgot your knife. <laughs> yeah, no, so that's uh, that's so then I move out to San Francisco and they go, this club's got hecklers. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I think I'll be okay. okay. Yeah, I can no, handle no, yeah. it. The move from the move from San Francisco, the move from Boston to San Francisco, the comedy scenes. It was like you learn how to swim in a snake infested swamp, and yeah. they're like, uh, the hot tub is under a hundred. I hope you're okay. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did yeah. you live in? Did you live in San Francisco or just? Uh, I started in Boston and moved to San Francisco, and then I moved to LA. I sort of followed Bob, and literally, you moved to San Francisco, <laughs> and literally, I think it's because of Robin. You go from Boston, which is very, I mean, it's my home. It's a very working class place. It's a, it's a, it's a port town. It's rough and tumble to come out of that comedy scene is like Marine boot camp. Like you're ready for anything. Uh, literally people walking onto the stage during sure. your set drunk, as Kenny Rogerson said, guys in the front row fucking a dog threatening you if you make the dog laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go to San Francisco, and the people are literally wearing berets. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was that period of the 80s where everybody was literally wearing a fucking beret. Yeah, and then when in that, wasn't that like that the San Francisco, which I was never part of that festival or that competition, oh, that yeah. was like a huge deal yeah. to yeah, win that. It was yeah. Crazy. But it well, was, it, it was a huge deal to win that for the for the day after you won it, and then and then it didn't mean anything. But right. it has a history of like people who didn't win, you know. Yeah, Robin well, well, didn't win. Oh, he did not. That he did win. He Robin didn't, didn't win. Uh, Stephen Wright didn't win. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? Maybe that's the I, thing. Maybe yeah. it's like coming in second is, yeah. is the big yeah, thing. Yeah, I didn't. I I I came in fifth the year Jake Johansson won, so he was you know he's good. Yeah. Our friend Dan Spencer, he was in it. I remember, and it's like it, the fix is in. There's no way he's going to win, so he's just hooked like a. <laughs> He the goes out. Gun, the he, he goes on stage. I don't know what he how he did it. But I he just, was there. I was there. He, he had it rigged so all of a sudden it just looks like he pissed his pants yeah. on he stage. Had a, <laughs> he had a small squirt gun in his pocket, but it and, he good. Had, and he just like put, he had the trigger hooked up so he didn't have to put his hand in his pocket. And he was like, oh, "The competition is a lot of pressure, <laughs> but I'm feeling." Her. And then just <laughs> this giant one. <laughs> How does that not win you the competition? I know, That's I know. Yeah, Unfortunately, yeah. because he did it in, again, because he did it in Sunnyvale, which at the time was a redneck town. Like, you would go out of San Francisco 10 minutes, and you're in Hayward, and it's a, it's a shit kicker town. But now... Those towns are San Francisco because of the tech revolution. Like all, now, those towns are just full of millionaires. Like yeah. you go, you know, they talk about uh, uh, Palo, like Palo Alto was a shit kicker town when we lived there, and now it's the uh, capital of the world. Do you hear that story? But it's a kind. Again, it's 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 not a true story. But this one comic who they said pissed his pants on stage in Vegas. Yeah, Kip and, and, yeah, yeah. Kip and, 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 and but it, I don't think I know Kip. But it like hurt his career, but it wasn't a true story. He didn't do it. Wow! Like you just remember that everybody story? had heard yeah. it. I don't. Yeah, it was some bullshit rumor that just wasn't true. But it did oh, hurt his career. Funny. I I thought I heard it did, but I mean, it was like it's one of those things that like I guess it, you know once I, the well, rumor starts, I, I, exactly squash... I knew exactly who you were talking you about. Did, right? so, yeah. yeah, I didn't want to say his name because I don't know him, but yeah. I, I know the story was not true. It's like uh, it's like high school again. Like, oh, I yeah, think, he pissed yeah. his pants. You just go for years going, you're the kid who pissed his pants. And you're like, I never But I can't see how that would hurt your career I don't either. I don't know how it would. Maybe well, back now, then. Well, was... now. <laughs> There's a little thing called professionalism. Well, like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> now I mean, you like... have to have a sex tape, too. Well, that was the thing. I think it was the Paris Hilton thing. Like, normally a sex tape would demolish you. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, oh, that's how she became famous. She yeah, Kim Kardashian, tape. too. Yeah. 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 I mean, her and Ray J. You yeah. may have Hot. known this comic. He uh, he, he my dropped sec- a deuce on Comics Unleashed with Byron. Aaron Allen. If you drop, <laughs> if you drop a deuce during your sex tape, that's where you have to go now. Have you done that? And that's, uh, and that's Cory Booker. That's how he announced. <laughs> that's great. Have you, have you done Comics Unleashed? 
I, I I've not done comics on this, but I see. <laughs> you but I have you? No, but I see. <laughs> see people, did you I, do it? No, no. It's I see like, Byron every day because he's a dad at our school. Oh. So I'm always like, "Hey, Byron, how's it going?" It's usually <laughs> just like you know, three comics that need to make dental for the year. Yeah, just it's like I gotta get my insurance. <laughs> <laughs> it's the master of segues too. That it's guy. really natural and comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, these guys just have bits. Uh, like they're just funny people naturally. <laughs> <laughs> they don't ever do bits, do yeah. they? Oh. No. <laughs> and it's, 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 just, it's like uh, the, whatever the questions are. It's it, it, there's no rhyme or reason. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. Uh, so have you ever gotten aquarium gravel in your eye? Why, funnily, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's a genius. That guy. He owns that Byron. network. I mean, he's, yeah, financially, yeah, he's, he's very smart. He's very smart financially. Yeah, he bought. What did he buy? The Weather Channel or something like that? He bought one of the... <laughs> no, he did. He, he bought, did. He did. Yeah. 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 And then he He's... made a movie about Chappaquiddick. He did made he... that Chappaquiddick movie. Wow. Did he? Yeah, yeah he, we, could... he bought it. Yeah. Wow. So was it in an effort to control the weather? <laughs> is, he a, is he like a Batman villain? <laughs> I'm, going to buy the, I'm going to buy the Weather Channel. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's... And I'll tell everyone it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> I would have bought it and then just lied every yeah, day to yeah, everyone. Yeah. He's changed his name to Byron Bar Sinister. <laughs> um, Birmingham, you're, it's going to... Oh, it's bad. There's locusts and uh, it's uh, raining blood and snakes. So yeah. if you have a coat... <laughs> Will you yeah. lie in Minnesota? It's going to be un uh, unseasonably sunny that old people are freezing <laughs> to death in their cars. <laughs> Uh, Dana, you in charge of the weather. You wrote for The Simpsons in, starting in 99, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. So when you go on to a show like that, is there, is there more pressure to, to go on to that show and start writing for them when there's all this foundation laid, or is it... Less pressure because no, it's awful pressure. It's awful pressure. It is it's, awful. It's like that. It's, it's if you ever seen <clears throat> if you ever seen the movie Let It Be, the Beatles documentary, they bring in Billy Preston to play mm -hmm. play with them. Right, and you can see this look on Billy Preston like, <laughs> okay, I'll just play with you guys. <laughs> yeah, like which um, which guy do I take the lead from? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's you know that was a it's a real uh, it was amazing room of writers and the first nine months. You just spend trying to figure out the al the algorithm of how they work because it's not a traditional way to write comedy. The way to the the secret of it is that the joke is the setup to the real joke. It's a kind of a staggered way to write, and um, I had a weird background because I was already pretty well established as a comedian. I'd already been on Letterman. I'd had albums. I'd had specials. I was on Seinfeld, and I made this decision midway through my career. Uh, I'm going to write. I'm going to I'm going to do this too and diversify. Um, and you really have to obliterate your ego because mm -hmm. to me, because it was just a lot of guys from Harvard lampoon, and then I came in like a juggalo, like I was <laughs> I was a carny, you know. Yeah. And it uh, it it took a while to kind of uh, calibrate. How, how did they treat you? I mean, being like your know, Harvard guys, did they treat you differently or no? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I mean not in a negative way, but it was I was definitely like I did not go to Harvard and I did not know all their friends and and they and obviously specific cases, but it was it was sort of like how. So did you? Could you feed yourself? You know, <laughs> how do you get paid in a comedy club? Is there a, like a hat that you pass around? Right. You know, there's, a, there's a bit of it, but but they're great. And you know, I worked with people like Mike Scully and George Meyer, who are the truly brilliant people. I mean, it, it, George Meyer to watch George Wire, Meyer work was alarming because mm -hmm. he was so funny. We had one time. We had a thing, it's called a Rube Goldberg. Homer had fallen off a roof, and then he hit a, uh, uh, what are those things called? Uh, like the gutter? No, the awning. Hit, okay. Like an awning, and then hit a flagpole, and then a this, and a yeah. that, and a that. And, and we couldn't end it. We didn't know how to end it. We'd written ourselves into a corner. And it's like seven people <laughs> staring at the <laughs> ceiling, trying to end this thing. And then finally, George just, and we did everything, you know, and a lot of, and then finally just, just George just goes, uh, what if he lands in a dump truck that's filled with marshmallow fluff and he's safe? And then after he realizes he's safe, a bunch of scorpions come out and just start <laughs> stinging him. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I was not going to come up with that. And I wouldn't have come up with that. How, ever. Many, how many years were you at The Simpsons? Seven. Wow. So it, put, yeah. it took nine months before I got comfortable, and then it was pretty comfortable. I yeah, and then I got a joke in the script. I was like, oh, okay, I can relax. Did it really take you that long to get, like, <laughs> no, lunch? No, oh, okay. I think, but it was, 
it was a while, and it was the dumbest joke of all. We were doing, a, and this is why I like working in The Simpsons. We were doing a parody of The Prisoner, uh-huh. <laughs> the obscure BBC series from the late '60s. And one of the things in The Prisoner was when you tried to escape the village, they sent balloons after you, <laughs> these giant balloons, and they would absorb you, and that's how you died. And uh, they did that on the show, and then they sent the balloon after Homer, and he just pops it, and then they cut back to the guards watching on the security cameras. <laughs> And the guard goes, why did we send balloons as security? And we couldn't come up with anything. And finally, after an hour, I said, shut up. That's why. And that was what went on the show. <laughs> that's, that's what on the show. Oh, that's weird that that didn't come from the Harvard guy, the guy who grew up in an Irish Catholic family in Boston. <laughs> shut up, that's why. Shut up, that's why. Did you have any favorite episodes or anything that you got to kind of take the reins on? Uh, well, my... Um, uh, the the my favorite episode that I wrote was called uh, Gugu Gai Pan, where they went to China and adopted a baby for Marge's sister Selma, based on my experiences going to China and adopting a child. So uh, that I had a a, a personal uh, you know. Uh, a thing to you actually it. got to put some of your emotions into the Simpsons. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, and that has a really funny. Uh, we did a we did a lot of really funny parodies of uh, the Miyazaki's, like Spirited Away. Like we have like <laughs> we have uh, uh, dragons. Uh, uh, <laughs> Homer is Homer is flying to China, and a magical dragon flies up next to the plane and asks for his nuts. He goes, <laughs> "Can I?" And Hank is area, who's brilliant. For some reason, the dragon talks like George Takei. <laughs> so the dragon flies up to the plane. He goes, I would like a nut. <laughs> Homer goes, I'll give you one. And he goes, you're a very greedy man. <laughs> the other dragons will hear of this. And then he flies over and meets two other dragons. And they start singing the man. He goes, there he goes. The man who broke a dragon's heart. And then they start singing, the man who broke a dragon's heart. And they start crying rainbows. It's like. <laughs> Like a fever dream. The absurdism. And so you you say to your daughter, I wrote this about you. (laughs) This is what happened to us. So that daughter, yeah, she's now a teenager, and I show her, and that Ling Bouvier is a character on the show. And Uh we're watching, we slip the channels, and she sees the show, and I go, honey, that's you. She's like, yeah. I go, no, that's you. She's based, that's your baby picture animated. That that character, character I wrote about you. She goes, yeah, I like Bob's Burgers. Oh, <laughs> she didn't give a shit. <laughs> but in her defense, it's her job to not yeah. give a shit. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, she did give a shit. And Bob's like, Burgers is good. And Bob's <laughs> Burgers is great. It's good yeah. Why yeah. China? Did you? Was it hard to adopt here? Or did you want to go to China? I don't like Americans, Chin. <laughs> Um, uh, no, my, uh, my wife at the time had, uh, read a book about the, the one child policy and, and the, oh. the way it affects women in China. So we thought we would, we would go do that. And, but it's, it's one of my favorite things in the world is the law of unintended consequences. Mm-hmm. And that's why I always love it when people think they have it all figured out. Like, <clears throat> this is what's going to, and it's, you've, you never have it figured out ever in China. They needed to curb the population, so the state said, you can only have one child. In the culture of China, boys are much more valued than women. If you get married, you and your wife go and live and take care of your parents. And your wife's parents are screwed. Wow. So they don't, because that's basically your child is your 401k. So all these people that if were- you have a son. Yes. Yeah, if you have your a son, son and if you have a daughter, you're screwed. Right. So all of these poor people would have one, they could have one child, they would have a daughter, they go, let's try again. And they'd take the daughter to an orphanage and drop her off. I see. Uh, and Or or worse. And so then uh, uh, people come in and, and adopt those children. But what you, so this was done because women in China had no power. Now there's one woman for every eight guys. And right. they have all the power. Because there's so because few, because there's yeah, so because of few supply of and demand. Yeah. So it's just the beautiful. Say, oh, you thought you had it all figured out. Yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah. This, now this was really gonna... short-term thinking. Yeah, on your well, part. It, it, it always had. It's the same. In, it's you know, we're talking about San Francisco. In San Francisco, all of these giant tech companies are buying up all of this real estate. And, you know, like there's a Google, the Embarcadero in San Francisco, where the punchline was, mm-hmm. has just been bought by Google. And they're kicking out the punchline after 35 are or 40 they really? years. I didn't know yeah. that. Yes, they are. And they're making a Google campus because you can't just have Google now. 
because you have to have Google and four restaurants and a gym because the people who work at Google don't want to go out into the street because the street is now full of homeless people because they've all been displaced because, because. the rents are so crazy <laughs> because all these tech people have moved in. Right. And the big problem in San Francisco now, too much human shit in the street. So <laughs> this is your billionaire's paradise. Right. You know, it's always, you never have it figured out. So There's always a... Booting out the pun. I, did, I just did a podcast there. It's, it's, when are they booting them out? Uh, in the fall, I think, late summer. Do they have wow. a new location? I think what I'm trying to say is, as they said in Godzilla, nature finds a balance. That's it. <laughs> Do they have a new location? No, uh, uh, they're uh, actually looking at where the old Cobbs was in the cannery. Which I never did terrific. the old one. That's the hard, old that's hard though. There's something about a location. Like in Boston, the uh, the old connection was so good. It was a perfect yeah. Yeah, box. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. it was. It was a square, black. I mean, it was yep. a perfect place to perform. Yes, it was. And you could change, you move the sign somewhere, but it's it's sometimes it's, the room. It, oh, it's it's uh, it's it's always the room, you know. It's uh, I I uh, initially when Dana and I went on the road, I just wanted to call this the the low ceiling tour. It would have been and great. Just play places <laughs> yeah. with low ceilings, yeah. just nice. Because well, uh, the original tour, the original name was the hilarious Wilburys, <laughs> or they uh, someone called so, it so, the, wa- the warp, the W A A R P. But uh, yeah, that was one of the, and that's one of the things I don't understand about comedy clubs on the road. I remember uh, Mike, you know Mike Carano. Mm-mm. Mike Carano's he worked at the Improvs for years, and uh, he's not a comedian, but he managed a club, and he's in the he's a he's a brilliant photographer. M- Mike C R C A R A N O. He's hilarious. He's w- sincerely hilariously funny guy. That's not a comedian, and. Or he, uh, he performs. He sings. Long story longer. He was goes to the Irvine Improv, which is, you know. But he was everything... booking it, and he would just book what he wanted. Yeah, he he would have, book, like, yeah. Tiny Tim, <laughs> Jim Carroll. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, just the most crazy And lineups. he was down there one day, and they're like, we're going to put a chandelier in here. And he was like, <laughs> why? <laughs> it's like these people that own comedy clubs and want them to make them look like anything but a comedy club. Right. You yeah. know, we're going to have a lit fish tank over here, and there's going to be lobster. No. Black box, light on the comedian, stick in the comedian's hand that makes his voice loud. That's what That's this is it. supposed to be. But the 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 narcissism of the no, it's got to be about the club. We've, we're going to have a, a movie playing on the side of the stage. <laughs> and there's a d- LCD menu. It's all these bells and whistles that you it's don't. It's such need. shit because you don't want anything distracting. Just nice right. and simple. Yeah. yeah. No but one they, goes back they, to a club and goes, well, the lighting on the chandelier was great. It's like yeah. the show was good or the food was good. That's yeah. it. And they, yeah, they, they have they all do these that, bullshit they do that. And these lit up ads on the walls. They do that with uh, uh, talk shows. When every, every time someone starts a talk show, they, 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 they think they're going to reinvent the wheel. And it turns out there's a reason why there's a desk. There's a reason why you sit on that side. There's, a, you know, right. uh, like I remember the early days of Kimmel. They had all this, uh, this, this insanity going on behind him. It was so distracting. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, I understand, and he wasn't wearing a tie, right? He said, he I'm not going to wear a tie. tie. This is going to be. And then it's like, you know, uh, I remember we were talking about it. It's just like if you come out and say something that is outrageous and you're, you're wearing a tie then it's actually funnier in a yeah, it's much, way it's, right. mu- it's, much it's outrageous more now yeah. 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 yeah it's like uh mtv they used to have these sets for their award show that actually looked like a, they were a pile of garbage <laughs> they would make the set look like garbage and then when someone comes up there and curses or says something funny or outrageous it's like well that's what you do in a pile of garbage yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah you're right yeah, yeah. actually right yeah, yeah. What, what, why do they sit on the one side why do they sit on the side i they don't sit on? i don't know but it ends up just working right it's like i think it has something to do with and I'm the 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 people's innate visual tracking and how they read that you, oh. your eyes scan from left to right. Hmm. Do Israeli talk shows do the same thing? Good question. <laughs> I, I've, I've never been on one. Good <laughs> question. Uh, I know in I know in uh, in uh, Japan the talk shows the the desk is on top of the desk. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are both like big movie guys and everything, and I know both obsessed with Ed Wood. Oh yeah. When you go and start, both of you, when you start writing movies when you start deciding i'm gonna try to make my own movie like what made ed wood so special was that he wasn't trying to make the worst movies ever not at all. and they just no. turned out he's very sincere like right. he's not the worst filmmaker because his not at all. films are 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 fascinating they're original they're you you're you're obs- you're going wow so when yeah. you when sometimes you... the consistency was not there though for <laughs> 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 With major criticism I have of Ed Wood. You might have trouble getting through the doorway. <laughs> when 
<laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes Bella Lugosi isn't always Bella Lugosi. <laughs> that's that's. The... But when you're starting to write movies and you idolize a oh. guy like Ed Wood, yeah. how do you stop yourself? How do you discipline from yourself? Ed Wood? Yeah, from being like, oh, I'm going to make this bad like well, Ed Wood. I don't know. I I mean, I think you know people might compare me to Ed Wood because I'm sincere, <laughs> but you know, it's like. Uh, he would have made stay if he had yeah, the like, chance. Like when I'm making an alcohol clown film, I'm like, well, who wouldn't want to see this? You <laughs> right. know, or when I shoot a baby in the first five <laughs> minutes of a movie, I'm like, this is. This should be playing every mall in America. <laughs> yeah, that's that's you know. Rules. That was I didn't the, know what he was talking about. That was the original about. version of Baby's Day Out. It was a five minute movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, like, I make these movies, in the, and I'm coming from a sincere place now. Now, how they're judged later, you know? And I just love too that you go like, okay, well, clearly. <laughs> Everybody, uh, mainstream America would want to see a movie where people are going around on a murder streak, on a murder yeah. streak, trying to kill what's popular yeah. in mainstream America. Yeah. And you're like, okay, now now you point it out to me. <laughs> <laughs> you're, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes, you're right. Sometimes you don't see that when you're in. You no know, hindsight, you know. But <laughs> Monday morning quarterback. <laughs> so I, uh, when we were doing, uh, I did the world's greatest dad movie. I did with Robin Williams. There's, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's, uh, uh, I don't know. I his son dies during autoerotic asphyxiation, and <laughs> Robin writes a suicide note to cover for it, and then Robin keeps writing as his dead son to get. Uh, Heat, you know. Yeah. He's like, did he write anything else? And he's like, yeah. You know, because he's <laughs> yeah. trying to sleep with this woman. So he keeps writing as his dead son. So, uh, but I realized in the, when I made the movie, and his son's like super into porn, so that he, Robin's character got over the grief of his son a little too fast. So I came up with a scene while we we're making it, and, um, and, and, and Robin's looking at these porn magazines on a newsstand, and it reminds him of his son, and he starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, we've so, all we've all cried at porn so, on newsstands. And it was I shot it in Seattle, and then uh, Chris from Nirvana plays the newsstand guy because I called him up when I was like, "Hey, That's you want to awesome. be in the movie?" And he's like, "Yeah." He goes, "Why me?" I go, "Cause you're funny." He's like, "I am." And then he's like, "Robin Williams is crying, and I want to hug him." <laughs> I, go, I go, "Save it for the film." So, so because I came up with a scene like. Like really, like a, a night or two before we filmed it, we didn't have permits. And Robin's like, he goes, "So, so what do we do if the police come?" And I'm like, "Run!" Like, <laughs> run what, you know. And so, so he used to call me Bob Wood. You know, it's amazing. And I'd be, I'd be like, "You can't make art in a mansion." He's like, "So what does that mean? I got, do I have to sell my house?" I go, "No, you're gonna be staying in a chain quality hotel with the rest of us." You, know? like, you really want to go through that door, Robin? It really, is. You, that's uh, the spirit are, of Ed Wood. You toured with Nirvana. Too. I don't know if we've ever asked you about that. I yeah, you, you were on the road with them in their last tour. I did. Uh, yeah. Because I, I met Kurt uh, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. He he was uh, he interviewed me on a college radio station. He was a fan of my stand up, which is always weird for people to hear. It's like finding out that Jimi Hendrix really loved Buddy Hackett. You know, you're like, what? <laughs> so 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 he really liked my stand up. And then he heard that I was doing dates uh, uh, with Cheap Trick, and he was like, I goes, I want Bobcat to to do shows with me. So so I went out and did. Uh, I don't even know how many shows, like 13 or 15 or something. But yeah, so I did a bunch of shows. I repelled a nude from the roof of the Oakland Coliseum <laughs> at midnight on New Year's. I had, I love the fact that like I still wore a hat. Like, of course uh, you like, did. I don't mind my vanity. I don't want people to see that I'm bald. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind if they see my gut and my and my penis. But uh, And I had the in utero <laughs> wings on. Oh, that's great. And I, and, uh, I came in and... Um, it was funny because I was just like, I was telling you, Kurt, like, I was like, I'm tired of cheering you up, you know, go get a, I'm tired of being scatter, you know, that was Elvis's chimp. <laughs> and I was like, go get Polly Shore to open up. And so, so they tell him like, you know, count down to 10 and they go, it's, you know, it's, they give him the signal and I'm holding all my weight from the roof, of, you know, on a cable, you know, and he looks up, I'm giving him the brown eye from 150 feet and he's like, and he goes, uh. Oakland, you wanna you wanna hear a drum solo? <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and then he finally just goes three, two, one, and I and I shot down really fast. I had rope burns on my ass and stomach, and I land behind him. And he truly didn't see me. He looks up and he's like, Polly. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. It was he was funny and he'd always be like, No one gets me, you know. Like he did you remember the thing he did where he, he had a Michael Jackson impersonator go up and accept an award for him? Oh, that's great. And so but the story was they didn't no one got the joke and they were like going 
Kurt Cobain is traveling with his own Michael Jackson impersonator. <laughs> yeah. But he was uh, sweet. What could, I liked go, what could go wrong? When you, well, when you're like that type of a singer, people just don't think of you as funny. Like, Making yeah. a joke. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. Probably, he's still a guy. But he would say exactly, stuff. Exactly. And he, he yeah. would say, I thought that was... Like, uh, I remember him saying to me, he's like, teenage angst just paid off. Well, now I'm bored and old. He goes, that's funny. <laughs> like, he was bummed <laughs> that people didn't think that was funny. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I did a bunch of dates opening for him. And something about stage that I remember. What was it? Was it Tad? Was that the band? Do you remember those guys? They're, yeah, they're really obese. So and when they were <laughs> stage, what they would do is the lead guy would, <laughs> he would, he would, Act like he's going to stage dive, take his guitar off, and run to the to the lip of the stage, and the crowd would just like spread out, like and, <laughs> because they didn't want to get crushed yeah, by him. Crush, yeah. And then he'd do it a couple more times, and then like the third or fourth time, he'd actually go because they would stop, <laughs> they would stop <laughs> running away from him. And they go, "We know this joke," and then all of a sudden they crush them. Yeah, so do you think uh, you think Kurt was smiling down from heaven as you were trying to get off the Juggalo stage? <laughs> uh, I don't know what he would have made of that, uh, but what? he. he, he because, uh, you know, like I would just, I was at a very self destructive phase, you know, and so the first gig I did was the Aragon Ballroom in Chicago. And I truly wouldn't say this kind of thing. I don't know about you. I mean, you, you, you how often do you, do you ever say something you go, oh, I wouldn't say that now? Oh, when I look back at old material? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's sometimes if something pops up or I'll listen to my old CDs, I'm like, yeah, I would rephrase that and make it either, uh, just but make it better. Ever, but did you ever, yeah. like, like, because like, because I was in Sh Chicago and Michael Jordan had retired from basketball. <laughs> and so I'm on the bus with uh, the Nirvanas and everybody's got these handmade signs like michael come back we still love you and and we don't know what's believe it or not not big sports fans none of us so so we had to have it explained well michael jordan you know so i go out there and i go hey i feel bad for michael jordan but for 40 million dollars a year i'd shoot my own dad in the head oh my god <laughs> in chicago and there's this noise it's not even booze it's yeah! <laughs> yeah, <just> emotional reaction, <laughs> and then and then I do remember this. I remember walking by Kurt, and he's like, "I can't believe you said that." <laughs> he's laughing. He's the only one in the venue laughing, <laughs> and so I think that probably sealed the deal. He's like, "There's our boy, yeah, that's, that's our guy, guy. Yeah. So, that's our Hitler." <laughs> yeah. So then, so then he, uh, so yeah, so so in order to get me out of the venue, they had to put a towel over my head. Oh, and, they hated you for it. Oh, there was more people back in behind the venue to beat me up than there was to me the band so they had this it's like a great a, bad guy wrestler yeah, yeah. and they yeah, had a yeah, towel yeah. over my head and then this huge uh, security guy just lifted me up my feet never hit the ground and I just just he he goes, just relax your body. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the next thing I know, I'm in the back of a van. And there's like people, just, yeah, it was like. That's so great. Villagers. That was, yeah. And in hindsight, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. No, but yeah, you're sometimes glad you in a live moment, you just, you look yeah. at it's alive, it happens. Yeah. It, there's also but you want to know, it, 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 the, I, I truly think the reason I said that was because it was going well. Yeah, so self destructive. It was like, yeah, the show is going okay, and then they're, they're, yeah, and I'm like, ah, fuck you! Oh, you punk rockers! Your parents dropped you off in minivans. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'll talk all night, and you'll never see your Nirvanas. <laughs> so just, what, just fighting with four thousand no people. Reason. When you're up in the rafters of the Oakland Coliseum, <clears throat> and you're naked, yeah, except for wings, mm -hmm. and you're hanging onto a and rope. A in your mind, do you just think? There's no business <laughs> like show business. Well, you know what? I, when, when I when I landed, I went to look to get my clothes, and the, someone had taken them as a joke. So of now course. I'm just standing, and there's bombs going off because it's midnight and New Year's, and so I'm just standing naked next to him, next to Kurt, like the noble warrior doesn't know that he is nude. And so uh, I learned this: uh, uh, when you're naked at midnight, you don't get a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> like people were like nude guy like when you when I was walking around backstage it's like no one don't make eye contact 